You ready for the word today? We're still in Ephesians, how to live an effective Christian life. How many of you want to be an effective Christian? You want to be good at it. I want to be good at it. Amen. I got on the plane yesterday, coming home, and I thought, well, you know, because I don't pay for a seat, they put me wherever. I'm in the middle seat. I thought, well, I'll talk to whoever listened. This lady put on the blindfold so she could go to sleep, and this guy had headphones. I'm like, well, I'm going to sleep too. So, <laughs> but you got you got to have that mentality. I'll talk to whoever listened. The other day, a guy's walking down the street, and he's cussing and screaming and everything, and I'm you know, I'm looking out the window. I'm trying to find him. I couldn't find him. So I went downstairs and I was helping the food ministry. And, and there he comes. He starts screaming again. And I'm like, I went out in the street. I said, hey, what are you screaming about? He's like, I'm in pain. He says, I'm in extreme pain. My leg. He says, you want to see it? I said, no. Nope. I said, you want me to pray? He said, yep. So I prayed for him. I said, are you hungry? And I went to the food ministry and I got him a sandwich, a couple bottles of water, and fed him. Gave him a place to sit down because his leg hurt so bad. Look for opportunity. It's all around you. The opportunity to, to share the love of God. Amen? It's here. So today the title of my message is Do Not Grieve the Spirit. And we're going to read out of Ephesians chapter 4, 25 to 32. If you'll stand with me. Beginning at verse 25. Therefore, putting away lying, let each one of you speak truth with his neighbor. For we are members of one another. Be angry, do not sin, do not let the sun go down on your wrath. Verse 27, nor give place to the devil. Let him who steal, steal, stole, steal no longer, but rather let him labor, working with his hands what is good, that he may have something to give him who has need. Let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth, but what is for good for necessary edification, that it may impart grace to the hearers. And do not, do not, and do not, and do not, Grieve the Holy Spirit of God, by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. Be kind to one another, tender hearted, forgiving one another, even as God in Christ forgave you. Dear Heavenly Father, as we come into this time of your word, I pray that, Lord, this word would come alive inside of us. Lord, I know it's not the desire of any of us to grieve the Holy Spirit. So I pray that the things that do grieve the Holy Spirit would get out of us, that we could put them things off today in the name of Jesus, that they have no hold on us. But, Lord, we would walk as the new man, new woman you've called us to be, and you give each one of us strength, Father God. And we thank you for this time of your word. In Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. You may be seated. It's a pretty strong passage here. The passage begins with therefore, which refers to the passage before it, you know, which refers to putting off the old man. Amen. And putting on the new man. Because you don't want to just put off something and, and not be covered. You want to put on the old man, man, not the old man. Put off the old man, put on the new man. It's just like when the guy got delivered, of, you know, the demon left him. And then it, it came back and it saw that it, the house was empty and clean. So he comes back with seven friends and fills him again with demonic. See, you can't just stay empty. You put off, you got to put on the new man. Amen. The newness of Christ has got to be on us. Amen. It's what's got to happen. Otherwise, you can put it off all you want and just keep coming back. You got to be filled with Jesus. Amen. Amen. So this passage that we just read is centered around not grieving the Holy Spirit. You know, and to grieve means this. It means to distress, to be sad cause grief, sorrow, to make sorrow. So there are behaviors 
that do that to the Spirit of God inside of you. Let me give you an example. In Genesis, the sin was so bad that God said, I'm so sorry I made man. It grieved him, the sin that was going on. So, and I, I, I don't want to distress the Holy Spirit in me by my actions. Amen. So Paul gives us some things that we should and shouldn't do. So things that we should put away and, you know, things we should walk in so, so that we don't grieve the Holy Spirit. I don't want to grieve him, man. I don't want him to go, oh, God, how long do I have to stay with this guy? Forever. Because he never leaves you and he never forsakes you. But he not, might not be happy about being there. I, I know that, you know, you don't wake up in the morning going, hmm, how can I grieve the Holy Spirit today? That's not in any of us. That's why we come to church. We don't want to grieve the Holy Spirit, amen? You know, we don't want to grieve him. We need to be aware of what does grieve him so that when we do it, or if we do these things, we can put them away because he tells us to put them away. So let me just run through about 12 of them. <laughs> and you could, you could uh, determine whether you do those things. But he says, number one, he says, put away lying. Put it away. He says, be angry, number two, and do not sin. Number three, don't let the sun go down on your anger. Number four, don't give place to the devil. Number five, don't steal. Number six, let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth. Number seven, don't grieve the Holy Spirit. Now, I'm just reading the Bible that I just read to you so you can get these on Ephesians chapter 4 in those verses I just read. And then number 8, put away bitterness. Number 9, put away wrath. 10, put away anger. 11, put away clamor. 12, put away evil speaking with all malice. So 12 things here that we need to just put away out of our lives. And I know this, if you have the Holy Spirit, he's there to help you. Amen? He's there to remind you, you know, of what not to do. Now, the first thing he points out, he says, put away lying. Lying is a good one to put away. Can I hear an amen? A lot of what Paul tells us in this has to do with what we say. Your words matter, amen? There is a weight behind what you say. Yeah, I mean, even telling, being a liar, carries a heavy weight. When you lie, you know, this is what Revelation 21, 8 says. But as for the cowardly, the faithless, the detestable, as for murderers, the sexually immoral, sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars, their portion will be in the lake that burns with fire and sulfur, which is the second death. They're going to go to hell, and they're going to burn. Liars, it's in there. I mean, you could look at cowardly. Don't be a coward, amen? Faithless, detestable, murderers, sexually immoral, sorcerers, idolaters. That's what the lake of fire was created for, the second death. God, it just shows you God does not take lying lightly. It's serious to him, and he's really serious about not being a liar. The Enduring Word Commentary, which for here on, I got a lot of notes from, just so you, you know, I got a lot of notes out of there this week. It was really good. But he said about lying, he said, a body can only, now, think about the church as the body. Okay, we're the body. A body can only function properly if itself, if it tells itself the truth. If your hand touches something hot, but your hand tells your brain that the thing is cool, your hand will be severely burned. That's why telling the truth is important because we are members of one another, okay? We are connected in the spirit. We are members of one another. And so when you lie to me or you lie to another member, you're telling it, it's, you know, you're dividing the body. You're saying it's okay to be a liar, which clearly the word declares, don't lie because you're gonna go to hell. We're members of one another. You're not left to yourself. So don't, I put this in there. 
Don't lie to yourself. So when you tell me a lie, you're lying to yourself. When you tell Ed a lie, you're lying to yourself. Don't lie. Don't lie. Don't lie. Come on, somebody. Don't lie. I'll stand here all day. You guys can help me out. Encouraging me. And then he says, be angry, do not sin. The new man does not, may, well, the new man may get angry. How many of you get angry? The rest of you are lying. Come on, you all get angry. He didn't say that anger is a sin. He said, don't sin in your anger. Amen. And so I like the way this commentary put it because a, here's a suggestion that anger can be prevented from degenerating into sin if a strict time limit is placed on it. Don't let the sun go da down on your anger. You know, when you get mad, and you, you know, because we all do, don't stay mad. That's when sin gets in. When you say, he said, when it goes past the sundown. So, however you got to do it in the sense that I don't like what you did to me, but I'm going to forgive you. And I forgive you. And go on. You know, because if you let that anger build, it turns into a lot of other ugly stuff and then you get bitter and you stay bitter and that root gets hard to get out. The devil's work is to accuse and to divide the family, amen? The family of God, to sow discord among the brethren. So when we harbor anger in our heart, we do the devil's work for him. And man, I don't like working for the devil. I remember one time I was praying for Delanda and I was praying God, I was telling God what bothers me about Delanda and I was accusing her to God and I was asking God to fix her. And God said, well, you sure don't need the devil in your marriage. I'm like, what? He's like, well, you're doing a great job of accusing her to me. The devil don't need to do it. And I'm like, you know, see, and I was praying. I was accusing her to God in my praying time by the way I was praying for her. Man, I had to repent. I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm taking the place of the devil in our marriage. Don't accuse people to God, amen? Don't let that sun go down on your anger. Don't harbor anger in your heart. Let it go. Let it go, amen? Let it go. Everybody say, let it go. Let it go. Now, I'm not saying it's always easy because you may get really offended, but you got to let it go. If you get mad at me, just call me and tell me and let's let it go. I do that with you. I never get mad at you. Come on. So then he said, let him who steals, steal no longer. The new man does not steal, okay? He works, works with his hand. He does, he does this not only to provide for his own needs, but to help somebody, amen? That's what he does. It says, let him labor. Let the man who stole labor. Labor is literally, it means to exert himself to the point of exhaustion. This is the kind of working heart God commands those who used to steal to have. So Paul, Paul's telling us the idea is that we should work hard enough that we're able to give, that we're able to help people. The purpose for getting becomes giving. Amen? And that's where God wants us to be. And he says, let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth. The new man knows to watch his tongue. You know, knows how to stop himself, say, I'm not going to say that. You know, when, whenever Delana says, I'm not going to say that, I'm like, hey, what were you going to say? You know, that, 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 that's bad. You shouldn't do that. Because <laughs> I don't want her to say it. I don't want that corruption to come out. Amen. The new man watches his tongue. He speaks what is good and necessary 
to build up for edification. You don't want to tear down, desiring to impart grace to everyone that hears them. That's what we want to say. So when you're feeling like, I need to say something mean, hold your tongue. Don't let it out. Stop. So you go, wow, that's bad. I can't. Even when you start talking, just shut up. That's what we need to do, in a, especially in a marriage. Keep that marriage happy. You know, um, but it means corrupt communication means not only obscene vulgarity, but slanderous and contemptuous talk. So we really need to be careful because remember, at the beginning, what I said, your weight, your words carry weight. Your words carry weight. So I was at the football game Friday night in Louisville, Kentucky. My grandsons were playing, and I looked over at Greg. I said, they're going to score a touchdown right now. He threw that lob pass over the wide receiver, and it just sunk right in for a touchdown. It was great. There's power in your words. Well, yeah, they won 53 to 6. So it was worth the flight. And he says, hey, don't grieve the Holy Spirit of God. The new man will not grieve the Holy Spirit, knowing that he is our seal, both in the sense of identification and protection. Don't grieve the Holy Spirit. Amen? Think about it. Don't do it. These things we're talking about. There are many ways to grieve the Holy Spirit. We can neglect holiness and grieve the Holy Spirit. And all of the that we've been reading in Ephesians is to encourage us to walk in that holiness, to walk with what God has. So don't grieve the Spirit. The Spirit exalts Jesus, amen? When we fail to do the same, we grieve the Spirit. Let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, and evil speaking be put away from you. Listen to this. The new man, everybody say new man, yeah. has control of his emotions. Has control of his slash her emotions. You know how many emotions we have? Two hundred and sixty-eight. I sat down with a couple one time, going to do some counseling with them. I said, how many emotions do you think you walk in? I'm trying to figure it out, Tim, where the 268 are at. The, the University of Texas will tell you. I found this years ago, but I've lost it since then. But I remember the 268. So I said, how many emotions do you think you walk in? And, and the guy goes, four. And the girl goes, probably five. I said, okay. I said, here's a list. All 268 emotions. I said, let's just do the A's. There's 24 in A. I said, you just check off the emotions you walk in just in the A's. Out of the 24, they were both hit 20. Okay, we're very emotional people. We really are. And it says that, you know, the new man has control of his emotions. We got to get a handle on it, amen? You can't just fly off, well, this is the way I've always been. Change! Change. You know what am I talking about? I'm talking about like bitterness, wrath, anger, and so forth. I mean, 268 things. I'm going to find that list, man. It's got to be on a computer somewhere. But when such things do emerge from us, we got to be able to deal with them in a manner that glorifies God. You know, when, when those emotions come out and, and they're just flying out, because that's what it seems like it happens. They just go, whoop, and they're like, you're like, where did that come from? And then, you, you know, and that's what you need to stop and say. You need, I need to stop and say, Blonde, I'm sorry, I don't know where that came from. That old man's trying to, remember I talked about last week, that old man will look for an opportunity? That He will. He will look for an opportunity to spout off and to bring trouble to your marriage or your relationships. And you just got to be quick to apologize with that. You got to put him down. Cut his head off again and put him down. 
Put down the old man, not your husband. <laughs> it's still funny this week, huh, Delonda? <laughs> Aristotle, he, he defined bitterness as the resentful spirit that refuses reconciliation. Wrath speaks of an outburst of the moment. Anger speaks of a settled disposition. Both must be put away. We gotta get rid of them. We, we need to move into this. Be kind to one another. Be tender-hearted. You know, when I, I flew into Kentucky, I went Thursday morning really early and, I got to my daughter's house at six. I flew into Cincinnati, rented a car, went down. I got there at six in the evening on Thursday. My son-in-law knew I was coming, so he, was, he met me there and let me in and everything. So I'm in the house and, and Carly's coming in and so I, I hide behind a wall. And Carly is so tender-hearted, it's beautiful. So she's got her arms full of groceries and she goes to set him down on the counter. I said, hey, little girl. She's like, I'm going to cry right now. <laughs> and she ran and she hugged me and she started crying. And it made me cry, you know. And, and then Jaden's hugging me at the same time. He's got my, my waist. And it was just a beautiful moment. But she's so tenderhearted. When she was little, the Lord told me, don't yell at her. Krista, I could yell at, and they just go, whoop. Carly, if I yelled at her, this is what the Lord told me. If this was Carly's spirit, when I yell at her, it goes like that. Her spirit closes off. She's tender. And so I couldn't, I didn't, my best not to close that spirit when she was growing up. Because she's tender. And there's people around us that have that tender heart. And, and we need to all have a tenderness about us, amen? We need to forgive one another, be tender, forgiving, amen? The new man seeks to show the same kindness, tenderheartedness, forgiveness to others that God shows him. We gotta do that, amen? Forgive, forgive quickly. Don't let the sun go down on that junk. So if we treat others as God treats us, we fulfill everything that Paul told us to do in this chapter. So if we just act away, put on the character of Christ, the new man, we're not going to offend the Holy Spirit or people. I do not like offending my wife. I told my wife one time, Delanda, I said, I said, just know this, number one, rule number one, it's never in my heart to offend you. And rule number two is, when I do offend you, remember rule number one. It's never in my heart to offend you. <laughs> but I do make mistakes now and then. And then he says, just as God in Christ forgave you, our forgiveness to others is pastored, I'm patterned, pastored, pattered after the forgiveness of Jesus towards us. When we think of the amazing way that God forgives us, it's shameful for us to withhold forgiveness, amen? You know, when you read in Matthew chapter 18 of the, the guy that borrowed a million dollars and, and the ruler brought him in, the rich ruler brought him in and said, hey, pay me my million dollars. And the guy got down on his knees and he begged forgiveness of that debt because he didn't have it. And the rich ruler said, all right, I forgive you that debt, a million dollars. And so then the guy goes out and he sees a guy that owes him $10,000 and, and he says, hey, Pay me that debt or I'll put you in prison. And the guy falls down on his knees, asks for mercy. And the guy goes, no, threw him in prison. Put him in prison. And when the rich ruler found out, he brought that guy that he forgave, he brought him in and he said, I forgave you a big debt and you couldn't forgive a little debt? He says, now you're going to prison, but you're not just going to prison. You're gonna be turned over to the torturers. So he went to prison to be tortured. And, and this is what the Lord says. This is how it will be for you when you have been forgiven and you don't forgive. 
And that's why a lot of people in the body of Christ walk around in torment because they're being tormented. God forgives our sin knowing that we're going to sin again. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. So his, sin, his forgiveness is complete and glorious. He lets it go. In his forgiveness, God bore all the penalty of the wrong that we've done. So Christ, knowing that we were going to do what we've done in our lives, died for us anyways. From that day forward, he knew all the sin that was going to happen. And he said, I'm doing it for them. I'm going to make a way to them to be reconciled to God. Amen. And, and God has no probationary period to receive his forgiveness. You know, I've talked with people before a lot. And they said, well, you know, like a husband and wife kind of thing. The husband be a drunkard and doing his thing and everything. And the wife, man. She's here every week praying. She's at every prayer meeting, praying, praying, praying. And then the husband comes one Sunday and he gives his life to Jesus. I'm telling you, this happened. He gave his life to Jesus. And you know what she did? She left him. Divorced him, went and married somebody else. Because how is it that that man, her husband, could be let off of everything he's done? That's what God does to us. He lets us off. Doesn't mean there's not consequences. I mean, they could have went to some counseling and, and got free, but no, he's done too much to me. I'm done with him. I'm, I'm like, wow, that's harsh. God's forgiveness honor offers complete restoration and honor. How many of you have ever sinned? Come on, some of you guys, all right. <laughs> I got a double lift back there. <laughs> We've all sinned. We've all fall short of the glory of God, amen. But he still forgives us. He still restores. Amen. He loves the backslider. He brings you back. He sets you in a place of healing and victory. The old, the old King James Version puts it like this. Even as God, for Christ's sake, has forgiven you. Gives us an assurance of forgiveness. We're forgiven, amen? We're forgiven. We've been set free. We are new. We're the new man. We're not going to grieve the Holy Spirit any longer, amen? We're not going to grieve the Holy Spirit any longer, amen? Amen? That's your better shout. Amen. I'm not going to do it. Yes. Come on, you guys got to feed me too. <laughs> I'll get done faster. We can see I already closed my notes. Oh, let's pray. Father, we truly desire the new man. We want old things put away. I said a lot out of the word today about what to put away. And I know this, the Holy Spirit is here to help us. I don't need to know what you need to put away. You know what you need to put away. But is there anybody here today, just raise your hand and wave at me if there's something you need to put away. Amen, amen, amen. Everybody else is perfect? Amen. All right. Come on now. Amen. Let's put these things away. Father, you've seen the hands go up. You know, God, you know what we need to put away. Let the Holy Spirit just minister with each one of us daily so that we walk in the freedom, which is Jesus. And we truly put these things away and we walk in the newness of man and we no longer grieve the Holy Spirit. 
Holy Spirit, that you would fill each one of us today. That we could walk in the victory that is promised us in your word. And that we would be a blessing to the body of Christ and a blessing to you, Lord. We thank you for that in Jesus' name. Father, I want to lift up my sister Sylvia as she's about to enter into a marriage this week. God, that you keep your hand upon her this week, Lord, and next Saturday at that celebration of marriage, Lord, that you just be with them and you bless them, God. I pray for a long life and a prosperous marriage in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you for her life. And we just bless them today in Jesus' name. Amen? Hey, coming up, October 6, 7, and 8, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, we got John Harkey with us, okay? And you know somebody that needs Jesus, bring them, okay? Bring them. You should bring them anyway, every day. But bring them. Wednesday night, we have prayer this week, a small group. Go to small group on Friday. Wave at them, Tess. Tess is back there. She invites you to her home. Mark invites you to the church. Robert invites you to Margaret's house. That's why Margaret's all excited. Hey, listen, Margaret went to the to the seniors uh, camp two weeks ago. And it's Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And on Friday, she, she wanted to cancel small group because it was at her house. But she went home after that retreat, got the house ready and had small group and they had a great time. So push yourself a little bit to go to a small group. They're all on our website, newhopefwc.com. You can scan that QR code right now, find one that fits you. Andy meets young adults at Elvia and Dwayne's house. Wave at them, Elvia. Yep, they're at their house on Friday night at 6.30. So you young people go there and hang out and have some fun. Amen. Yeah, Elvia always makes food. I don't know if you are this Friday, but she's a good cook too. So. We, we have business meetings, and when I go, she's always feeding me. I'm like, oh, stop feeding me, because I eat it all. But uh, their house is a real place of blessing. So um, joint group is tomorrow at 530. I'm going to try and be there. I, I had a missionary calling me, and he's, he wants to meet. So make sure you come out tomorrow night, 50 plus. There's a lot of good things going on. Hey, listen, prayer on Wednesday night. We need you. Oh, huh? We need you. We need you and you and you and you and you. Hey, I know, I, I don't even know what's on TV on Wednesdays. I, I, who cares? Come and pray. You can bring your crying baby. I don't care, Haley. I don't care. She, you know, Man, we got to teach, teach them when they're young, man. Teach them when they're young how to pray. There's something about corporate prayer that just is, to me, it's off the hook. Everybody prays. They're not all here today, but man, Linda, she's new to this church. She gets up and prays. She's never done that in her life. She gets up and she goes to that pulpit in the foyer. We meet in the foyer and she prays and it's awesome. She does such a great job. Elvia will just break your heart. She just gets up and goes, Delanda, she's a warrior. She's going crazy these days. She's praying so hard. Come and pray with us, please. 6.30 to 7.30. And I, I'll stop on time unless God is moving like crazy. Come and pray. It's a good thing. Why don't we stand today? Blood drive, October 12th, 10 to 4. You know, I'm doing something, you know, to try and lose weight and everything. And so I, I can't give blood this time. Is there anybody here that will come and do it for me? Oh, thank you. All right, Haley, sign up online October 12th. And uh, go to the bathroom today. There's a QR code. You can take a picture of it. And just sign up. It's really easy to sign up. So, Father, we give you praise for this day. We thank you, Lord. Lord, we thank you the Holy Spirit and I thank you for the strength that we have in you to not grieve him Lord as we go our way today I pray a blessing of peace over every person I pray health, pray health I pray provision and protection and we thank you and 
We love you, Father. In Jesus' name, and everybody said, amen. Go in peace. Go have a piece of cake, a cookie, a donut, and a cup of coffee. Meet somebody. Talk to somebody. Bless the Diaz Hernandez family today on the dedication of their baby. And have a great day.